the x, 3 to the x, and 10 to the x. And 10 to the x is the steepest. And now let's look at their logarithms. And what I want you to do is to watch what happens to 2 to the x, the lowest curve there. You see that log to the base 2 is the steepest curve. The orders have been reversed. Now, let's do some calculus with these very important functions, a to the x and log to the base a of x. And we'll begin by looking at a to the x. Now, I hope you've looked at that material at the beginning of the correspondence text, in which we showed that the derivative of a to the x is given by f prime of x is equal to a to the x times lambda subscript a. Lambda a, you remember, is just some number. And the important thing here is that the derived function is very much like the original function. The only difference is that it gets multiplied by this factor, lambda a. So we'd expect the graph of the derived function and the graph of the original function to look very similar. Well, let's look at some pictures of that using the tangent construction and check that it's so. This is the graph of y equals 2 to the x. You'll remember that plotting the height of a triangle with unit base and the tangent to the curve as its hypotenuse draws out the derived function. So that's what we get for the derived function when y equals 2 to the x. That's 2 to the x times lambda 2. Now let's try with y equals 3 to the x. This time we'll leave out the triangle and just watch the tangent. And that's the derived function for y equals 3 to the x. It's not surprising it's roughly the same shape as 3 to the x because it's 3 to the x times the constant lambda 3. Now let's look at the general function, y equals a to the x. And we'll see what happens as we change a. We've just seen what happens with a equals 3. As we increase a, the curve gets steeper. As we decrease a, the curve flattens. Now, what happens to the derived functions? Here's what we get with a equals 1.6. Now, let's increase a. Sometimes the derived function is steeper than a to the x, and sometimes it's flatter. It all depends on a. OK, let's have a look at the derived function of log to the base a of x now. And you remember from that work in the text that to calculate the derivative of log to the base a of x, we use the fact that it's the inverse function of a to the x and the chain rule, and we came out with this formula. The derived function of log to the base a of x is 1 over x times that number lambda a. And the thing to notice here is that the derived function is very nearly 1 over x. The only difference is that there's this extra factor lambda a underneath. And what that means when we look at graphs is that the graph of the derived function of the logarithm should look very much like the graph of 1 over x. Let's have a look at some more pictures. Here's log to the base 2 of x, and we'll plot its derived function, as usual, on the axes below. We get a curve something like 1 over x, and here's 1 over x for comparison. Now, let's see what happens to the curve log to the base a of x as a changes. We've just seen the case for a equals 2. As a increases, the log curve becomes flatter. This is log to the base 10 of x. And this is log x to the base 1.6. Now, how does the derived function change?
This is the derived function of log x to the base 1.6, and the dotted curve is 1 over x again. As a increases, the derived function goes below 1 over x. Here it's above. And here it's below. So our derived function is sometimes less than 1 over x and sometimes more than 1 over x. Again, it all depends on our value of a. We've been looking at the derived function of log to the base a of x. It's 1 over x times lambda a. And the derived function looks very much like 1 over x, which is this dotted curve here. Now, wouldn't it be very convenient if we could find a value of a which makes this factor, lambda subscript a, equal to 1? Because if we could, then for that particular base, the derivative of log to the base a of x would be just 1 over x. That would certainly be simpler. But something even more striking happens when we look at what would happen to the derivative of a to the x in that case. Because if lambda a is 1, then the function and its derivative are the same. Well, can we find such a base? To answer that, we'll have to work out precisely what this lambda a represents. To do that, one can just take the value x equals 0 in this equation, because a to the 0 is 1. And so we find that f primed at 0 is equal to lambda a. Lambda a, you see, is the derivative of a to the x at x equals 0. It's the slope of the tangent to that curve, a to the x, at x equals 0. So can we find a value of a for which the curve a to the x has slope 1 at x equals 0? Here are some curves a to the x, and here is a slope of 1, about like that. I've got different scales here on the x and y axes, look. Now, it looks as though 2 to the x is going to be a bit too flat. 3 to the x is going to be a bit too steep. But surely, somewhere in between here, there is a value of a for which a to the x has slope 1 at x equals 0. Let's see if we can find that value of a. This is what we had with a equals 3. As we can see from where the derived function cuts the axis, the slope of 3 to the x at x equals 0 is greater than 1. With a equals 2, the slope, the value of the derivative, at x equals 0, is less than 1. The value of a for which a to the x has slope 1 at x equals 0 must be in between. Here's the value we want. This derived function has the value 1 at x equals 0. So a to the x for this a has slope 1. We call this number e. And there's a very special relationship between the two functions. The derived function of e to the x is just e to the x. So you see, that's the important thing about the number e. But the derivative of e to the x, I can write that in Leibniz, d by dx of e to the x is exactly the same, e to the x. This special function, e to the x, is often called the exponential function, and that can be shortened to exp. And now, log to the base e of x, its derivative has an important property as well, hasn't it? Let's just see how that goes. This was the situation with the log to the base 3 of x. Its derived function was smaller than 1 over x. With log to the base 2 of x, it was greater the function log to the base e of x has exactly the function 1 over x as its derived function. You see, that answers the problem that we started this program off with. Since the derivative of log to the base e of x is just 1 over x, we can use the fundamental theorem of the calculus to write the integral of 1 over x dx between limits, say, a and b as log to the base e of b minus log to the base e of a. And if we take a to be 1, 
then remember that log to any base of 1 is 0. And so we'll finish up with the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x dx is indeed equal to log to the base e of b. Well, I hope you took all that in. He's just shown you that that function f is log of x to the base e. I still think my way is much easier. All that bit about lambda puts me right off. That's the whole point. Look, he chose that value e so you don't have to worry about the lambdas. Look, it's so easy. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of log of x to the base e is 1 over x. And that means that when you want to work out this integral, it's just going to be log of 1.5 to the base e. It's very easy. But you wanted a number. So I look it up in log table. So what do I do? You use a formula. You've seen it before. Here it is. Look. There's the formula. Log 1 plus t to the base e is t minus t squared over 2 plus t cubed over 3 <laughs> minus oh, t squared over 4. Oh, I remember. Four. It didn't work for all values. And you're so keen on proof. I didn't see you prove that one. Just watch the program. Now, there are still a couple of problems that we ought to deal with. The first is, how do we find an accurate value for e? Well, I'm going to leave you to do that one after the program. The second is, how can we find an efficient way of calculating log to the base e of x? Well, you won't be surprised to know that our efficient method of calculating logs is to use that trick for dealing with awkward functions that we developed in the last program. That's the Taylor polynomial. Now, you remember that to calculate the Taylor polynomial of a function f, you have to first of all find f of 0, f primed of 0, second derivative of f at 0, third derivative and higher derivatives and so on, and put them in this formula. And you see, we're going to have a little problem with log to the base e of x when we look for its Taylor polynomial because the first term is f of 0. f, in our case, is log to the base e. And unfortunately, log to the base e is not defined at 0. But we can get over that pretty easily, actually, simply by translating the function along a bit. Now, translating doesn't change the function very much, but it does produce us a function which is well defined at 0. And how far shall we translate? Well, obviously, we'll translate until the function passes through the origin, because then the Taylor polynomial of that function will have 0 as its first term. And in fact, this is the graph of log to the base e of 1 plus x. So what we have to do is look at the Taylor polynomials of log to the base e of 1 plus x and use them to calculate the values of log to the base e. Right then, so here is our Taylor formula for our Taylor polynomials, and here is the function that we're aiming at, log 1 plus x to the base e. And because I can differentiate that function, I can now fill in this table. Here we are, f of x is log of 1 plus x to the base e. And putting x equals 0 in there gives me log 1, which is in fact just 0. Now I can differentiate that, differentiate log 1 plus x to give me 1 over 1 plus x, and putting x equals 0 in there gives me a 1. And I can carry on doing this. This one's going to give me a minus 1, this one a 2 factorial, and so on. Minus 3 factorial, 4 factorial, minus 5 factorial, 6 factorial, and so on. And I can take as many of those terms as I wanted. But now let's feed that information into our formula. It's a sort of recipe. It says 0 times 1 plus 1 lot of x, and so on. For example, 2 factorial times x cubed over 3 factorial. OK, then, let's feed that information in successively and look at the Taylor polynomials one by one. And on the screen here, I've got the target function, that is, log 1 over 1 plus x. But now the first Taylor polynomial isn't really very significant. It's just 0, so it will appear as a line which is coincident with that axis. There it is, the 0. But now we can change the first derivative and get this linear Taylor polynomial, which is a line at slope 1. But now, let's look at the second-order Taylor polynomial and see what that looks like. 
As before, we can leave a trace of the previous approximation behind. Now, we're adding in the third degree polynomial. And now for the fourth degree polynomial. The approximation is getting better, but over what range does it seem to work? Well, we can show this behavior continuing, but we won't any longer bother to show you the coefficients. So we've got a Taylor series for log 1 plus x to the base e. And here it is, I've written it down here for you. And you can see now, I think, why it is that it works for mod of x less than 1. And now this integral that we started off with, the integral from 1 to 1.5, well, we know that that is actually log of 1.5 to the base e now. And if you actually want to work that out, you can either look it up in tables, or if you want to, you could use this series. So, in fact, we've done quite a number of things in this program. We've tied together some loose ends from block two, and we've introduced and talked about these functions, e to the x and log. And in doing that, we've actually looked at some important points from block three. Well, that's the end of the block. And, oh, there's only one thing for you to do after the program, of course, and that is to find a formula for e. Oh, it's a shame that's over. I really enjoy those programs, you know. What are we going to do now? I know. You want me to work out the value of log 1.5 to the base e. No, I don't. You did that weeks ago. Here it is. You, somewhere in here you've got the value 0.4055, as I remember. Good. I say, old bean, anyone for tennis? <clears throat> Love all? <laughs>